This video is brought to you by Nebula. It's a fact rarely acknowledged in Western media, but Turkish President Recep Erdogan was genuinely really popular for most of his tenure. Erdogan's reformist Islamism resonated with many Turkish voters, and he presided over an impressive period of economic growth and political stability, especially by Turkish standards. However, despite narrowly winning the 2023 presidential election, the most recent polls suggest that support for Erdogan and his AKP party has cratered to its lowest level ever. So in this video, we're going to have a look at Erdogan's political career, why he's so popular, and why he isn't anymore. Hint, it's mostly the economy. Before we start, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing and ringing the bell to stay in the loop and be notified when we release new videos. So let's start with a bit of context. Erdogan first rose to national prominence in 1994, when he was elected mayor of Istanbul as a rising star in Turkey's Islamist political movement. For context, although Turkey is a predominantly Muslim country, it was founded as a secular republic under Turkey's first president, Mustafa Kemal Atatürk. At the time, Atatürk argued that Turkey had to ditch the Islamic political system of the Ottoman Empire and adopt Western secularism to modernise and succeed economically. However, Atatürk's brand of secularism, known as Kemalism, was a particularly strong version of secularism. It wasn't just about the separation of religion from the state, as is the case in most Western countries, but rather an active attempt by the Turkish state to squeeze religion out of the public sphere almost entirely. This particularly strong form of secularism was always resisted by both Islamist elites, but also by a majority of Turkish voters, who consistently voted for more Islamist-minded parties, although they rarely identified as Islamists, instead preferring to describe themselves as conservatives or nationalists. Whenever these parties moved too far away from Kemalism, they were brought down by the military, who saw themselves as the guardians of Kemalism, and toppled four governments between 1960 and 1997. Erdogan himself was convicted by the military-backed government for calling for religious insurrection in 1998, after he quoted an Islamist poem, and sentenced to 10 months in jail with a lifetime ban on political activity. Erdogan ended up only serving four months in jail, and his ban on political activities was lifted via a general amnesty in 2001. His AKP party then won the 2002 election, winning 34% of the vote, but nearly two-thirds of the seats, thanks to Turkey's first-past-the-post system and 10% threshold. The AKP would go on to hold power continuously until, well, today, and Erdogan himself had a positive approval rating for most of this time. After changing the constitution via a referendum, in 2014 Erdogan was elected president, a post he's held ever since. So why was he so popular? Well, as we see it, there were two main reasons. A strong economic record and relative political stability. The AKP came to power on the back of a devastating stock market crash, a decade of economic stagnation and decades of political instability, punctuated by military coups. Erdogan changed all of this. He presided over an impressive period of economic growth, with GDP per capita quadrupling between 2002 and 2015. His political dominance also led to a long period of political stability. There were moments of tension between Erdogan and the military, who didn't like Erdogan's brand of mild Islamism, or that their power was being eroded by his political dominance. Erdogan always insisted he was committed to political secularism, but pushed Turkey towards a softer form of secularism, with policies like lifting the ban on headscarves, investing state money in mosques and introducing Islamic teaching into Turkey's education system. These tensions were exacerbated by Erdogan's authoritarian pivot in the 2010s, culminating in an attempted coup in 2016. But Erdogan survived the coup by literally facetiming international television and telling his supporters to take to the streets. Nonetheless, Turkey still has free, if not fair, elections, and in 2023 it looked like he might finally lose. Polls ahead of the election had Erdogan's AKP party on track for their worst result in decades, and his main rival, the CHP's Kemal Kılıçdaroğlu, Darolu, ahead in the presidential election. However, after an uninspired showing by Kılıçdaroğlu, Erdogan squeezed out yet another victory, winning the presidency with 52% of the vote. However, in the past few months, it looks like Erdogan's appeal has finally waned. 
Polling by Metropol in May found that Erdogan's net approval rating had fallen to minus 16, with 56% of respondents disapproving and 40% approving. This is down from minus 10 in March and minus 4 in February. More recent polling looks even worse. Morning consult polling from late September gave him a net approval of minus 31, making him slightly less popular than Keir Starmer and his lowest ever net approval. Similarly, a Sonar poll from last month put the AKP on a record low of 24%, 12 points behind the CHP on 36%. So why is this? Well, it's in part because after nearly three decades, voters have just grown tired of him. Erdogan is also in some sense a victim of his own success, in that he's essentially settled some of the issues that once gave him the edge over his opponents. The question of secularism is a good example here. In the 2000s, many voters preferred Erdogan's Islamist-tinged interpretation of secularism over the stricter Kemalist version of secularism advocated by the CHP. But now, even the CHP accept his watered-down version of secularism, which means he no longer has a comparative advantage. But the main reason is the economy. Since about 2018, Erdogan has been pursuing a remarkably unorthodox economic policy, cutting interest rates and printing money in response to high inflation. This has crippled the Turkish lira, which lost 95% of its value compared to 2015, and pushed inflation up to a high of nearly 90% in late 2022. This policy was clearly unsustainable, and a readjustment was inevitable, but Erdogan was able to defer most of the economic pain until after the 2023 election by burning through Turkish foreign exchange reserves to temporarily defend the lira. However, once he'd won, Erdogan quietly U-turned. He appointed a more orthodox central bank governor and finance minister, who duly hiked interest rates from 8.5% to 50% today. Obviously, a 50% interest rate would be painful on its own, and growth has slowed to its weakest level since COVID. But to make matters worse, the policy wasn't immediately successful. Inflation actually rose again in late 2023, reaching 75% year-on-year in May of this year. And while it's fallen for the last four months, it's still running at 50%. Similarly, the lira has continued to decline against the dollar, going from 25 to the dollar immediately after the election to 34 today. In short, Erdogan is finally paying the political price for his misguided economic policy, and it looks like his last-minute U-turn might be too little too late. Now, it would be foolish to rule Erdogan out, and the next presidential election isn't until 2028, although the AKP would have to call it early to avoid the constitutional term limits kicking in. Nonetheless, another Erdogan victory would require a remarkable recovery, especially given he probably won't be up against as ineffective a candidate as Kilic Duroğlu. Now, Erdogan isn't the only world leader to be up against public opinion. And if you enjoyed this video, you'll also love our analysis of American polls and voter trends in our new tongue-in-cheek series, WTF USA. Each week, we dive into the online discourse, explain the politics behind the stories, and tell you if you really need to pay attention. For example, in recent episodes, we've talked about Trump's foray into the world of crypto, claims of dog-eating, and AI-generated Musk memes. These might sound stupid, but they actually tell us a lot about the candidate's economic plans, the state of post-truth politics, and how the US feels about its deficit. That is to say, WTF USA brings you the wildest moments from the 2024 election, tells you the hidden political meaning behind each of them, and then if you can just ignore the chaos, or if you should follow along. New videos come out every Friday only on Nebula. That's the streaming service we've built alongside a bunch of our creator friends, and where you can find all kinds of superb content like WTF. We're super proud of WTF USA, and we hope that with your support, we'll be able to make other interesting, weird, and entertaining series with Nebula in the future. So signing up genuinely helps TLDR to grow and expand. As I say, it's not just WTF either. There's a whole bunch of other original content on the service, from creators like Real Life Lore, Wendover Productions, and Neo. You can also watch every normal TLDR video ad-free on Nebula as well, and in some instances, before they land on YouTube. If you're not a member already, click the link in the description to get 40% off. That's just $30 for a year, or $2.50 a month. We really hope you check out the series, and as always, thanks for your support.